Hey guys, welcome back. So ever since I posted my VP9 video where I showed the gun failing basically when I got it wet, uh, I told you guys I quit carrying the VP9. I carried it for about a year and I invested in a bunch of magazines, a bunch of holsters. I was really committed to the VP9, loved the way the gun shot, but the one critical failure in my torture test video was the water test at the very beginning of the video. Now, I know a lot of you guys, especially the HK fanboys, came unglued when I posted the video. They're like, oh, yeah, well, if you ever find yourself flying down the road, your gun flies out the window and hits a steel plate, I expect it to fail. You're missing the point. The whole reason those other tests even occurred that afternoon is because the gun failed the very first test, which was dunking in pretty much pond water. Okay, so after that happened, we cleaned the gun, did it again, and again, the gun continued to fail. Matter of fact, throughout the rest of the afternoon, just because the gun had water in it, I'd occasionally get a soft primer strike and the gun wouldn't go off. We'd also have trigger reset problems where I'd pull, 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 trigger, pull, bang. Gun became unsafe dunking. after I dunked it in water. So I quit carrying the gun. Now you can criticize the video all you want, but I'm being honest, I no longer carry the gun. So I went back to the previous two guns I was looking at before I adopted the VP9. Uh, I can post a link to that video down below when I announced the VP9 is my carry gun. I was considering the Lionheart LH9 and the Sphinx SDP. And there's a number of reasons why I considered going to double action, and I'll talk about those here in a few minutes, but um, I wound up going with the Sphinx. And this is the Sphinx pistol here. So basically, this is, in essence, a Swiss-made CZ. The bottom part of the gun is polymer, the frame is aluminum, and the slide is steel. This is the SDP, or the compact model, but even though it's compact, you can see I can still get all my fingers on the gun. Well, before we talk any more about this pistol, I'm going to make it ready as if I would normally carry it. I'm going to walk over to the same mud hole that's killed so many other guns before it. I'm going to throw it in. I'm going to stand on it. Let it all soak in, get nice and juicy. And then I take the pistol out, shake a little bit off so I get a little bit less in my face. And that, gentlemen, is why I don't carry the VP9 and why I'm gonna continue to carry the Sphinx or CZ type pistols. Let's take a closer look at this gun. Let's go clean it up in some pond water and we'll talk a little bit more about the Sphinx. I'm going to go ahead and find some slightly cleaner water to clean the gun off. As you can see, it's still covered in mud. The magazine won't drop free. You'll be able to hear it come out. This is that real gritty, nasty mud that uh, the Mac range is known for. I'm going to take the gun, slosh it around the water, try to get it a little bit clean. the magazine a little bit. Magazine's dropping free again. Now guys, this isn't a really hard test, okay? This isn't something that is out of the ordinary. The reason I demand my carry gun can withstand a little bit of water and mud is because the planet is two-thirds water, people. Water is everywhere. It rains everywhere. And take a look around. Show them what this looks like out here. This is where I live. This is where I, I work and I, I everything. We get a lot of rain around here. We have a lot of standing water and there is a possibility that I may find myself in a self-defense situation where there is water on the ground and my gun may get wet or I may wind up laying in the water in the fight. So a water test is the most rudimentary test I can think of and if a gun can't handle that I'm not going to carry it. There's just no reason to. And so I don't think it's an unreal expectation. By the way the ammunition that we used and the mud test is the exact same ammo I used with the VP9. Some of you guys are saying, well, the primers are too hard, ZQI ammo sucks, whatever the excuse was. It's not true. This stuff runs in every single 9mm. You see it in pretty much every 9mm video we shoot out here. We at least run a box or two of ZQI through it. The VP9 was the only one to fail with the, that particular ammo. All right, so loaded it up. We sloshed it around to clean it, decock it, and I'll just put a few rounds into the base of the tree over here. I mean, this is pretty much all the same stuff I did to the, uh, the VP9 that killed it. So, will I continue to carry the Sphinx? Yes, I will, because the gun continues to work. 
I just want to make a point, guys, for the rest of the afternoon while we're shooting the SDP that I am not going to clean it. That means I'm not going to take it apart, wipe it down, or put any type of lubricant on the gun, which I use CLP. I'm going to keep the gun bone dry and pond fresh. All right. We've been shooting it some more. Absolutely no lubrication on the gun. This is not how I would carry it. As soon as I get it home, I'm going to give it a thorough cleaning. I'm going to run it under hot water, scrub it out, put lubricant on everything, get it back into carry shape. My carry guns I do not abuse. I take good care of them. My other guns that I'm testing, I abuse the snot out of, but um, I take very good care of my carry gun. So the reason I started looking at double action autos primarily, and there's a couple of factors, but let's talk about the biggest. I, I started carrying appendix style, and even with the VP9, I was starting to carry it appendix style. With my Glock that I carried for so many years, I carried it at three o'clock position. But with appendix style, I was, I was always nervous because when I would practice, I would always have to be very slow and deliberate back into the holster because I'm always protecting that trigger where I don't really have to be so deliberate with the double action auto. I can just stick it in the holster. And that's because when I draw the pistol and go back, the double action gives me that extra tear of security because it takes a good 10, 12 pounds to draw that hammer to the back or to the rear before it fires. There's a very low possibility of me pushing so hard and not feeling that feedback and pushing it hard enough to fire that round off to hit myself in one of these two major arteries down here, which if you get hit, guys, don't call 911. Call your wife or significant other because you're gonna bleed out. You're gonna die. There's just no surviving that if you get hit. You're gonna lose blood pressure, go unconscious very quickly, and soon thereafter expire. This is not the place you wanna have an 80 or ND discharge, okay? So being aware of that, having a striker fired pistol in practice, it always made me nervous because I'd draw and I'd pull all the clothing back, look at my holster, stop with my situational awareness, and I would start to look at the gun to make sure everything was clear before I put it away because as you know, a Glock has a fairly light trigger and no manual safety. With a double action, I don't have to worry about that. So it gives me the extra tier security for the type of carry that I prefer. Now, I don't want to get into an argument over why you should or shouldn't do appendix carry. For me, it's my best choice. I like it. It allows me to keep control of the gun. It allows me to draw and fire from a vehicle much more easily. So I'm using it and sticking with it. And for that reason, I have a lot more comfort with using a double action auto. Now let's grab a magazine here. This gun's been curing with the crud in it now for quite some time. Let's do a little bit of shooting with it. Same ammunition. Now let me talk about something else here really quick. With the CZ type pistol, what makes it somewhat unique is the fact that you have this large frame. I point this out in many videos. I have monkey hands. I mean, just absolutely huge ape-like features. Now look at how I hold a pistol. When I hold a pistol thumbs forward, look where my support thumb is. I get a deep grip on the pistol and my thumbs lay along the side. Look where it's laying. On a traditional automatic, if I get a real tight grip on it and I push, I'm actually pushing on the slide, which increases the possibility of me inducing a malfunction through user error. Now look at my thumb, it comes almost to the end of the pistol. And so I can use that frame as support for the gun and I'm not running the risk of applying too much pressure to my slide. So that's another reason I like the CZ type pistols, that large frame space. The downside is you have very little purchase here for running the action to clear malfunctions or anything like that. Now fortunately the Sphinx has very, very aggressive texturing. Those serrations are very deep. They're like little cheese graters and you have forward serrations as well. Uh, there's no problem getting a hold of those. Now, the one thing I don't like about, about the Sphinx, two things. As you guys know, I'm not a fan of Novak sights because I, I, I prefer to have the ability to run the slide off clothing if I need to. Also, as of right now, um, the Sphinx does not have night sight options available for it. So all I have is a, a, a white dot in the front and a black blade in the rear. It's okay, offers a great sight picture, gun shoots wonderfully. It's just, I need night sights. Uh, hopefully, they keep saying that they're going to bring them to market. It's just uh, troublesome at the, at, at the current time for them to do that. And sadly, it doesn't use any of the other sights that are currently available in the market. So that's the biggest gripe I have against the gun. Ergonomically, everything about this gun just feels right. You have replaceable back panels here. Again, the bottom half of the gun is, is polymer, makes it very light. Have aluminum up here and then a steel slide. The overall quality, fit, and finish of this pistol is superb, and the price reflects that. Now, keep in mind, Swiss labor is not inexpensive. That's part of the reason why the gun is so pricey. Uh, just 
having made in Switzerland automatically drives the cost up because the Swiss have a minimum wage like nobody else. <laughs> At least that's my understanding. So uh, stuff coming out of Switzerland is just already pretty pricey, but there's no doubt that the Swiss make a fine product. And uh, the, the Sphinx is certainly another example of that. The holster they carry my SDP in is made by Contact Concealment. And it's a Kydex holster that's fitted to the gun. You can see how high the sweat guard comes up. Doesn't come quite to the back. And it fits very nicely in the front where I like to carry it. And under a light article of clothing, conceals pretty darn well. I like it because I can quickly get it out. I have young sons I take to school to stay in compliance with the laws. I can't go into the school with the gun on, so I can pretty discreetly put the gun on and take the gun off without doing what I call the super tuck dance, where I'm undoing my pants and doing all sorts of crazy stuff to get the gun in and out of my, my pants. So contact concealment, check them out on the web. You can find them through Google. This is the box that the Sphinx will come in. It's a rather large plastic box that says Sphinx on the outside. It does have the capability to be locked, but it is not an airline approved case. Inside, you'll find, oh, look at that. Somebody went and got a second one. This one's flat, dark earth. <laughs> this is the SDP with the extended grip. This one has two extra rounds. My SDP, my carry gun, has, holds 15 rounds in the magazine. This one holds 17 in the magazine and also has a threaded barrel, which is a, a, a European 13 uh, left hand thread, 13 millimeter left hand thread. But it comes with the grip panels that you see here, so you can adjust the grip to your size that you prefer. And it comes with magazines, a cleaning kit, and a magazine loading tool in the manual that would be in the box as well, which I didn't bring out with me this afternoon. So here is the flat dark earth gun. Here's my carry gun. You can see the slight difference here in the grip. You'll notice that when my hand's on it, it's actually plenty of room there for, um, for my pinky with my large hands. Actually, I still have plenty of room with just the standard SDP, so it's not really necessary. But if you want a threaded barrel from the factory, that's the way to get it, and you have to pick one of these up. Sadly, I forgot to bring out my, uh, my Griffin can this afternoon, so I won't be shooting it suppressed. We'll save that for another video, but I wanted to show you the flat dark earth gun. And while we're doing that, let's talk about some of the features overall. So here's your magazine release on the pistol. It's the same on both of these guns. Again, the only difference is gonna be the grip length on the flat dark earth gun. You have your slide stop, slide release, your decocking lever, and then over here you have a decocker, no slide release. Okay, so you can decock with the left hand if need be. Uh, it's, it's not 100% lefty friendly. If you're gonna run the gun when you reload it, with the lefty you're gonna have to, to run it by running the slide or get used to using your index finger to hit that slide stop. Otherwise you do have a decocker over here. This one has the 17 round magazine, which also works. In the standard SDP, it will just stick out slightly. So this is the magazine that I carry as my backup or my spare. So I have two extra rounds, but then I will carry the 15 rounder in the gun for everyday carry. Let's field strip the SDP and show you what they look like on the inside. First, you're going to want to make the gun safe by dropping the magazine out, checking the chamber area, make sure the gun's clear. Go ahead and decock it. Now, all CZ type pistols will have these little index lines. You want to line these two lines up to pull the cross pin out. So I'm going to go ahead and cock it, pull the slide to the rear. You'll find ways to, to hold it. I kind of grip the gun like this, push on this little dimple on that side. You can use the magazine to help push it. It'll pop out pull it across, and now I'm gonna go ahead and decock it, and it should just slide apart, okay? Yes, it does have a firing pin safety, so if it's dropped, it can't fire, even with the hammer at rest. Take the spring out, it's a captive spring. Push the barrel forward slightly. You'll wanna unscrew on this particular model, the thread protector, so you can pull the barrel out of the slide, and that's it. You don't have to go through that step of pulling the thread protector off, obviously, on the non-suppressible version. Put it back together, drop the barrel into the slide, put your recoil spring in. Now you'll notice that all CZ type pistols have full length rails. This slide rides inside the frame. It's kind of reversed to something like a 1911. So you'll slide it on, 
pull it again back to these little tick marks. Go ahead and cock it, pull it back, hold it, put your cross pin in, line it up, and push. Decock it, and the pistol is back together. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learning about what my new everyday carry pistol is. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video, you can ask those questions down below in the comment section. I usually stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer those questions you may have. And if you'd like to support the Military Arms channel, the best possible way to do that is to shop at Copper Custom, which is our online store. You can pick up a Mac patch for $3.99 and it really does help out here at the channel. Also, if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, which is Full30.com. And then there's this little guy. Just see how silty and nasty the mud here is on the Mac range? Even the most mundane of water holes. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.